So I gotta be honest with you, this video should have been uploaded in February. But then I realized that I had 150 gigabytes of video material and I had to write a voiceover and that I didn't have any music and then I completely lost my motivation. Well anyways, now I am writing a voiceover. While surfing through the internet, I stumbled across instructions from an old white dwarf for building a bane blade. There's a link to the tweet in the video description. Because of the weird magazine size, I first had to scale all pictures to A4 size. Then I went on with typical building steps of cutting out templates, putting them onto cardboard, tracing them, cutting out the cardboard pieces, and then trying to glue all pieces together and nearly fail because the instructions are not as precise as I would like it. This is what I ended up with in the cardboard stage. The instructions really aren't that good and after I finished the project I found some instructions that are way better, also linked in the video description. Then I started gluing on a bunch of stuff for detailing. Armor plates, turrets from plastic lids, the engine, tank tracks, ladders, rivets and other things. While detailing I asked myself what could look cool on a tank? What would make sense to take it with you? What would the crew actually need? And what could tell the story? Then I looked at the historical tanks to see if my ideas actually made sense and where to store what things. Most of my brain power went into the camouflage. At the moment I'm concentrating on urban battlefields, so the tank had to be painted in an urban color scheme. So I started thinking and educated myself about camouflages. The first thing that came to my mind were Dazzle Camels, World War I ships with black and white stripes. And somehow, over the course of watching several videos about how camouflage works, I then ended up on a video explaining the Berlin Brigade Camel, which was designed for urban battlefields. So if you're interested in all of that, I put down three links to the mentioned videos in the video description. After I gathered all this information, I asked myself three questions. What does an imperial city look like? How does that change during an armed conflict? And what does my game board look like? 
I thought over these questions for days and then came to the following conclusion. Front and back are going to be painted with stripes in grey, white, black and a bluish grey. From a distance this is supposed to look like walls or pillars of different buildings from different perspectives. There are also going to be horizontal blocks of brown and white with grey and white dots that should look like dirt or rubble piles with gravel and stones on them. Bottom facing surfaces are getting painted white or light grey, so that shadows are neutralized, similar to deers and other animals. That way, the tank will more likely look like a flat wall than a three-dimensional object. The top will be painted with slim white stripes and thick black stripes. From far away, this will eventually look like streets. On top of that are going to be splotches of brown and black, dotted with white and light grey. This is supposed to look like puddles in craters with rubble and gravel. So in theory, this camouflage should disrupt and divide the tank's silhouette, while also letting it completely disappear in a destroyed city. To push the detailing even further, I put some decals from the Creek Veteran Kill Team on the tank. I did copy the decal placement from someone else's tank, link to that in the video description. This is the finished tank. I hope you liked the video, if so then I'd like you to give me a thumbs up. If you want to know how the ruin for the Baneblades parking spot is going to look like, you should subscribe to my channel because that's going to be covered in my next video. Till next time, goodbye.